All right, chat. So let's talk about the new patch notes. Season 11.1. I played a creator match and I played a couple in houses with chat, trying to see what's good. So the battle pass, cross gen pass. It's going to be for Smite 2, I'm assuming. All these skins. New God skins. Okay. Divine Legacy. A bunch of titles. That's pretty cool. Divine Legacy. Okay. Immortal Honor event. Quality of Line. Blink and Teleport both have altered sounds. Yeah, that was definitely important, right? Someone TPs behind you. It feels like they fucking blinked on you. <clears throat> General gameplay. Multiple items and ability procs have been fixed so they cannot proc off totems such as Death Toll. Literally, I lost land to this. Couldn't it have been one patch earlier. Nah, it's all good. Clapper. Um, all modes. Here you go. With nuts arrival on horizon. So yeah, this is the new rock that comes down. Uh, the celestial comets. It's a brand new mechanic. I love this mechanic. I really enjoy it. Starting at 90 seconds of the game, a celestial comet will crash down in a lane. As a comet lands, it deals a, mount, a small amount of damage and knocks back any gods in his area. So don't stand in the circle. The comet has 10 pips or like just hits. And can be damaged by only basic attacks. Each time a comet is damaged, a chunk of uh, will fly off toward whoever hit it. And picking up a ch uh, chunk grants 3 XP and 5 gold. So a small little amount. So it's like a little bit of XP and gold off the little pieces. It's 10 pieces. So it's overall, what, 30 gold, thirty XP, uh, 50 gold. I'm, yeah, I'm pretty sure. And then after the comet is destroyed, the scepter, the OG scepter. If you guys remember Indra's scepter. That does like, it's like mystical mail. Which then can be picked up and the only one god remains in the area. So you have to like dominate that little circle. So like uh, earlier me and this mid laner, me and Apuanche were like fighting for it. And we we're both sitting in the center. And eventually he, he had to like give up his like his like spot because I was out poking him. Which then gave me the scepter which allowed me to power farm. Which I love because it gives you pressure. If you have pressure, it gives you pressure, right? <clears throat> The scepter will last 90 seconds, and then in Conquest, 30 seconds after it disappears, a new comet will spawn. In the modes that have towers, when both Tier 1 towers and the lane are clear, the comet will stop spawning there. Very interesting. I didn't know that. The comets will stop spawning altogether once all Tier 1s are destroyed. Interesting, interesting. Yeah, they don't explain what the scepter does. I agree. It's just damage. It's just like tick. It's like mystical mail damage. Kind of. I don't like this just map, but it's whatever. All right. Let's talk about the Conquest changes. <clears throat> um, so welcome to year 11 Congo last year we joined the brand new beautiful map this is by the year adding features mechanics in each season this year we have upgraded the art to include a massive update to the chaos base as well yeah the base I feel like the map looks beautiful right now it really lit up really just beautiful I mean that's the best way I can explain it the green buff and chess camp have spawned, uh, have swapped locations. Roaming harpies will now spawn in on the green camp. Okay, and shield and cooldown camps have also been moved to a brand new locations on the outside edges of the map, respective sides. Interesting. Is it getting cheeky cheeky? Bastions, bastions, next up, bastions. So their health increased by 20, uh, 250, and then the physical protection increased from 50 to 60. So there's just tank here, and the gold reward is increased. I like this. I felt like they were too easy to kill. Spirit totems. Spirit totems, we are excited to keep uh, keeping the spirit totems for another iteration of the map. And they, I, I'm sad they took away recipes. I feel like that was a mistake. I, I really loved the recipes. I thought recipes were amazing. I know they kind of mixed it in with the shards, but I just thought they should be separate. Spoilers, lifesteal is getting a rework and class passives are being removed. Make sure you read more on below, uh, more on that below to get better understanding of why we're making those changes. So crimson totem added uh, increased magical lifesteal from 7 to 10% and added 10% physical ability lifesteal. What? Five physical and magical pen? Wait, this is, is what... It, oh, so it's flat instead of percent? Okay. Okay. The rogues... The Cyclops rogues... So in Conquest only, every other Cyclops rogue defeated will spawn in Jungle Shop. For allies, that allows you to sh uh, purchase from the item shop within its range. I love this, by the way. So you can... Per so the Jungle Shop will last 60 seconds before disappearing... Um, the jungle shop will always start with the second Cyclops Rogue. So it has to be a purple one. Okay. In the map location where the shield and cooldown camps used to uh, lie, there's two cross map teleporters pads. I love this too. These pads, you saw it earlier, these pads are not unlocked until eight minutes into the game and the Nagas will guard it in the area beforehand. The Nagas, five, 500 health, six physical pots, 10 magical, base physical power, 28. Base kill, XP 80, gold 45. Pretty nice little camp to do there. Um, to teleport from one side of the map, stand on the teleporter pad for 4.5 seconds. Be wary as you will be revealed to enemies the entire time you're on the pad, even when just crossing over them. 
That's interesting. I don't know that. I, I kind of notice when people are just, every time I see them, they're crossing. When the warm-up time is completed, I feel like I don't like the fact that it shows where they are. I feel like that should be warded, right? It should be a core ward spot <clears throat> and sentry ward, right? So you're playing for, like, vision on that because that's a really important spot. That's the way it is in Dota. Like, you're playing for the TP, for the TP on both sides. You're playing super hard for vision control because it shows so much information, right? So I really didn't like that, but I feel like maybe they can mess around with it. When the warm-up time is completed, everyone standing on the pad, including the enemies, will teleport. I think that's really interesting. I mean, I feel like it's goofy, but, I, I mean, it's fun, right? Yeah, exactly that chorus on her. Anyone who teleports is not able to teleport again for 120 seconds or two minutes. You have a debuff. After the teleporter is used, the pad will slowly reset over 4.5 seconds. But anyone in, anyone is able to step on it and resume the teleporting warm-up from there, where it was. Meaning you can follow enemies or allies quickly after, after they teleport. The Stygian Beacon. <clears throat> the beacon no longer culminates in the unleashing of the titans instead each team that captures the beacon will deal damage to all frontline enemy structures each time the beacon is captured regardless of which team captures it the damage dealt will increase up to three times okay so they're more important as they, they scale 500 650 800 okay this damage can kill towers but will never bring a phoenix lower than 10 percent of its maximum health i like that so that you can't just backdoor with phoenixes i mean you don't just kill them by without sieging because that takes away a big part of the game right so i agree with this fire giant the fire giant now has a brand new attack added to its rotation fireball uh firefall this attack summons a giant beam of fire on the sky dealing damage to anyone in the area firefall will follow its target for the next three seconds then knocking up anyone who remains in the area additionally the fire giant now spawns in what is that and a figgy oh yeah yeah when it reads 85 percent health if he has 750 health zero protections the figgy can be damaged by both basic attacks and abilities when the figgy is destroyed the fire giant will take 15 percent more damage from all sources for 15 seconds yeah that's super interesting i, I like this base health increase from 8600 to 9050 health per level 350 so the scaling is up Enhanced base health increase from 10 10.6 only 400 okay increase uh, health per level okay as well spawn time shifting so blue camp spawns time increase from 0 to 0 15 okay why ever since the camps were unleashed the conquest star has become incredibly complex where even one small mistake is supposed to be punishing our biggest goal between shifting the camp locations and the sponsor just to simplify and make it clearer for players as to where they're doing their matchup uh, I don't know I don't know how I feel about this but understandable I guess Blue camp spawn time increased from 0 to zero fifteen. Dual side speed camp spawn increased from 0 to 15. Chest camp spawn time increased. Because we are shifting up the start of the game, many XP values across the board. We're getting adjusted in order to ensure the players are hit level 2 before laying higher. But you'll notice many gold values were going down. With so many mechanics added, additional gold rewards is important to keep the pace of the game feeling right. Okay. Basic speed bakes. So XP up gold down is this everything yeah increase decrease increase yeah, okay so gold so xp on everything's up and gold is down on everything i didn't even know that dead man okay so it's every camp right cooldown scorpion everything base gold base gold base gold decrease 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 decrease, decrease, decrease. okay all three rank modes are now hard reset okay yeah that's normal this character what a disease Dual new characters are banned, whatever recipe all recipe the removed from the game. I just I I'm so sad about this. I'm so sad about the recipes being removed. I thought they were so smart. I thought they should have added on the on that. Claw shard and carapace shards are removed from the game. New passive shards, golden shard. Passive all attacks. Uh, yeah, so it's like free berries. I love the berries, man. I love like playing the spikes of and playing aggressive to try to get those, you know. New passive, vibrant shard passive. Every, every hundred years travel, you gain a buff that deals ten plus fifteen to scaling physical magical power, physical damage to the next enemy hit with your next basic attack or ability. You don't have to actually get effects; they're always active. Yeah. Relic request. Recipes provided players with a way to track their micro success in the early game, urging them to complete their steps as fast as possible. We wanted to maintain a system similar to that, so we incorporated the idea into a new way to interact with relics, relic quests. Every relic now is able to be upgraded for free, but in order to do so, you must complete several quests. Each of these quests is assigned to be as equal as, equal as possible among the roles, even though it will most certainly be completed at different times and different roles. 
All relics cannot be upgraded for a free, but completing very quest throughout the game. No, you'll you may still purchase relics upgrades for gold in order to accommodate for this automatic upgrade system. All relics now only have one tier three option. I just I don't like that. Tier one and tier two relics have a unique quest and also skill that play on the relic is purchased for a second throughout the game. Relic quests. All tier one relics, kill or assist minions, first relic, 140 minions, second relic, 80 minions. Boo. Relic quest tier deal instance instances of damage or card control to enemy gods. You may only gain one stack. Boo. Bell Frenzy and Curse Song can remove from the game. Okay. Ages amulet. Yeah, they moved it to only the only the acceleration one. This Aegis was so much better, like in terms of outplays, so acceleration is boring. Blink Rune and Corrupted Blink Rune is removed from the game. Scorching Blink Rune is the only one that's in. Enemies affected by the flames have their movement and attacks be slowed by all. Oh, what the hell? It also includes 1.5 second burn duration without when leaving them. Okay. Um, Bracer of Radiance. Bracer of Illumination is removed from the game. Bracer of Radiance has no changes. Cloak of Meditation. Cloak has the other tower removed from the game. Cloak has got no changes. Heavenly Wings. Hasten Wings is removed from the game. Heavenly Wings now have 10% attack speed. What the hell? Tier 2 Heavenly Wings now still 10%. And Entangling is 25% increased attack speed. Interesting. So, okay. Horrific Emma has anti heal now. Remove the Emblem of Trembling. Nobody ever used that. Remove attack speed slow. New effect, all healing received by enemies in the god reduced for 40% for their shield active. Okay, so their shield and healing, so it's like Ankh pretty much. Greater horrific emblem removed, attack speed slow. New effect, all healing received 40%, 75% any curling issues removed. Oh, what? Increasing parallel removed, attack speed slow. New effect. Okay. Magic shell, fortifying shells removed from the game. Phantom shell has no changes. Boo. Purif purification beads, chaotic beads is removed from the game. Temporal beads has no changes. Yeah, chaotic beads was chaotically horrible. Cha chaotic beads was a meme. Shield of thorns. Shield of thorns using this item grants you 15% damage mitigation as you store all the damage taken over the next three seconds. Then you explode in a 30 unit radius, dealing 100 plus 50% of the damage taken. The magical damage up to the maximum of 20% of max health. All these active enemies can only lifesteal from you for 70%. Oh shit, dude, thorns is kind of sick. Greater shield of thorns using this item grants you 15% damage mitigation and store as you store all damage taken over the next three seconds. And you explode in 30 units. Okay, for 100. Yeah, okay, cool down. 120 seconds, two minutes. Thorns of Judgment. Using this item grants you... Okay, yeah, 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 yeah. Ba each basic attack from enemy gods reduces the cooldown, so upgrading it. Okay, okay. It's pretty cool. I feel like Soul Lane is a lane to play now, right? I feel like Soul looks pretty good. Sundering Siphon. Sundering removed. Sundering Blast has no changes. Okay. That's so weird. Sunder stayed? Teleport Fragment. Heroic Teleport removed from the game. Persistent Teleport now. Effects... Yeah, this new relic is pretty sick. Divine Barrier. They play a 40 unit wide wall of Divine Light that reduces damage of all enemy basic attacks that pass through it by 30%. Additionally, all enemies that pass through the barrier are slow by 30% for 3 seconds. The barrier lasts for 30 seconds. Cooldown. That's so sick for support. I kind of like, I really like that one. Even maybe solo. Tier 2, Greater Divine Barrier. Deploy 40 in you. Oh, Divine Light. It might be even good for a mage. Like, if they have like 2 or 3 left clickers, you I think that's better than Aegis. I think that's like the new shell, right? Pretty sure. It's better. Dude, 30% and a slow. I really like this one. I, I think they should apply this. Like, look at this relic and then apply it to the rest, right? Like, do more like this. Tier 3, Bless Barrier. So, what does it do here? And increases the damage of all the basic attacks by 10%. Oh, it's not that good of an upgrade. Mana Chalice has been re removed from the game. Rest in peace, Mana Chalice. F, F in the chat for Mana Chalice. New ward, proximity ward. Um, this is a ward that allows you to see enemy, <laughs> enemy movements within 20 units. It does it does respect line of sight and can see through walls. It can't see through walls or stealth. If an enemy god enters its vision or range, the ward will explode after 1.5 seconds. In a 45 unit radius, slowing enemy gods for 20% for 3 seconds, really them for 10 seconds, it remains five for 5 minutes or until kills can only carry one at a time. Holy shit. Wow, these wards are awesome. I love these wards. I love the Raven Ward. 
This is a war that flies along 500 unit line that allows you to see the enemy's movements within 50 units. It does not respect line of sight, but can see through stealth. But can't see through stealth, sorry. And can only carry one at a time. I love the Raven Ward. I'm going to have to use this one a little bit more. Probably buy a couple in this next game. Lifesteal rework. Lifesteal is now being adjusted to a game wide to fi be 50% less effective against minions to accomplish this. All lifesteal on minions has been decreased by 50%. All lifesteal items have been. Abilities have been increased by roughly 50%. In essence, this. This will decrease lifesteal on minions by 25% while increasing lifesteal on gods by 50%. Additionally, the lifesteal caps have been raised 50 to 80% for physical gods, 40 to 70% for magical gods. Physical items, okay. That's interesting. I mean, yeah, I, I always love the mechanic of, like, going to a camp and lifestealing a lot and, like, outplaying with that. Like, kind of looking like at camps, like, health packs in a way, but I, I understand why they did this. I like I like that they compensated by making more life still better on God, so like you get rewarded for hitting your stuff right. So I think that that was a good way to like balance it. Upgrades from so this is Crimson Claw. This is a new item, right? Upgrades, from, yeah, fifty physical power, twenty percent attack speed, fifteen percent life steal. This is like the best stats of ever, right? It's like almost like old old Blood Forge. I remember, remember when they added uh, uh, attack speed to Blood Forge, and everybody's like, "Wait a second, Blood Forge in every build." Life stealing from enemies while at full health grants you the value of health. You know what makes you 15% of your max health. Yeah, this is pretty OP for like Bologna, right? Or like, because it's 15% of your max health. So, you know, you have like 3k health. The shield's pretty fat. And it has really good stats. And then you just go full hybrid after. It seems interesting. You have to be full HP. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Um, Leather Cal, I'm tired of this being like one of the best start, the most consistent starter. I don't know about you guys. I'm just so tired of seeing this item. Like, increased life steal from 4 to 6%. Okay. Hunter's Cal increased life steal from 10 to 15%. Deer's Cal increased life steal from 10 to 15%. Jones Vigors increased ability life steal from 23%. So they just buffed them since they do so so little to the camps. Bound Gauntlet, Spike Gauntlet, Soul Eater, Evolve Soul Eater. Soul Eater's dead. Gauntlet. Because like like so like Soul Eater was doing so well when like you can hit a whole minion wave right, but like when you hit like two people with like an Uller three one with Soul Eater or like Marty, like it just nothing. I mean maybe I'm wrong. I don't know. I'd have to see it. Maybe let's see. If you, like I would like to see if I hit like two or three people with two spells. Like how much I'm life stealing. Evolved to ours, yeah. Aussie increased life to twenty eighteen percent. Passive life to fifteen. That's still pretty weak. Straight edge. Yeah, buffed it. Buffed it. Buffed it, buffed it, buffed it. Nice stalker, increase life steal. Okay, camo's assassin trigger, increase life steal three percent. Okay, Cyrano's shift to spring growth. So they have to touch all the life steal, huh? Erlang, spot of weakness. Fender, twenty. Yeah, they touch all the life steal. Everything's buffed just a bit. Yeah, call the heal, Pele. Pele. This character, Acorn, Uller, life steal. Moana. Did you realize? Didn't realize I wasn't sub. My boy Zergy with a w eleven months. Appreciate you, man. Magical items reworked rejuvenating heart. Rejuvenating heart is an item that sees in the hub that just didn't stick as such. Rework into a new hybrid and lifestyle item that will grant your teammates benefits from life stealing. 55 magical power. 200 health, 300 mana, 15% life stealing. Life stealing off an en enemy gods heals yourself and your biolas within 40. Life stealing off enemy gods heals yourself and your biolas. That's an interesting item. Pretty good stats. I need to like feel it. It's kind of hard to like. Tiny trinket, increase life steal, increase life steal, increase life steal, bank crawl, bank crawl, yeah, all the magical, increase life steal, increase life steal, increase life steal, yeah, total grinds, increase life steal. Anubis not included in this because passive grants healing with life steal, which just according without any value changes. Interesting. Okay, stacking item refreshed. Stacking items are long standard pillar of smile that has persisted to the change by how low they are. They come with the color problems by core design, whether they whether that's competing for stacks of fellow teammates feeling like you're unable to find another donor, really missing the last in order to run in this way, removing last seal requirement. No! Instead, said players earn stacks within the damage and earn double the stacks when hitting enemy gods. What? And earn double the stacks when hitting enemy gods? All last hit stacking items are being reworked to now gain stacks from dealing damage to enemies. Oh, okay. Okay. Dealing damage to enemy gods grants double the contribution towards stacks, meaning that you can now stack items faster by actively fighting on opponent. Items are 
and then the song the arts gonna gain save it though thirty thousand to concert okay 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 I like this again zero point four physical power zero point two physical power zero point I like that Gain 50 mana per stack. Gain total 750 mana. Gain 0.4. Okay. Oh, I got the thought again this time. Doing 45,000 mana gods. Max stacks increase. 7500 decrease base mana with 250 mana gain percent mana. Gets. Okay. Warnock is receiving a bigger chance than the other stack gain has. It's been unpopular for a long time now. While it's having a higher damage requirement, you also be gaining stacks by taking damage alongside dealing it. So, <laughs> so inting. <laughs> so straight inting when you have Warlocks. Doable, doable. Gains tax by dealing or taking fi 55,000 god and winning damage. Decreased base magic power from 65 to 55. Okay. Decreased base health from 150,000. Gains 0 0.2. Gets total 25. Magic power 300 health. So what is the difference in the stats? Gain a total of 25 magical power and 300 health. So, so you get 55. So you get what? 80? 80, 80 power? It's pretty good. 80 power, 300 health. It's really good. Com what's Thoth? What's Thoth power now? If you only had Thoth. Upgrade to Tower Shield. Void Shield. 55 physical prods. 150 health. 25 HP 5. Holy HP 5. Okay. 24. They did the, yeah, the same thing. This is like Void Stone. Black Thorn upgrades from Heavy Hammer. 35 physical power. 250 health. 200 mana passive. You're over 25%. You get 20. Uh, when you're under 20. It's 50, 50 MP5. Sheesh. Glyphs. Players may now. I, I don't understand this though. I think this is kind of weird, right? Like, you can build. You're, you're, you're no longer limited to only one glyph, yet there's only like 10 glyphs. I should have a bunch of glyphs. Like, literally like 50 or 40 glyphs. Like, for almost every item should have a glyph. Every item should have two glyphs. Glyph, your critical strike chance is multiplied by 1.3. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't mind the glyph change. It's just there needs to be more glyphs because then specific rolls are just better because you could buy more items together. Like, support is broken, right? Like, support has the best glyphs, and, and, and the build doesn't look stupid. Like, I'm not going to go DB Jotun's just to get double glyph, right? Like... This is kind of like support is, has the best glyphs and, and it looks the most consistent in terms of items. So I'm going to buy Breastplate, Relic Dagger. You know what I mean? Hunters have kind of good ones, right? Yeah, XE crit, so you can just scale past it. Mannequin. Literally the worst item ever. Removes physical protection, but it makes the build expensive. Yeah, but either way, like you stop scaling in smite, so you, you should... Oh, you're talking about support. Okay, yeah. Uh, I mean, but you never stop scaling, though, at that, at, at that point. Removed physical protection, added 7% attack speed, mannequin hidden blade. Removed damage reduction, added 15% attack speed, decreased slow duration from 5 seconds to 3 seconds. Okay, increased slow from 20 to 20%. Okay, mannequin mace increased attack speed from 15 to 20%. Okay, removed attack speed, added 7, five, seven physical prods, so it's just more like for warriors. Remove the attack speed. I'm so sad for I. Rest in peace, I. F in the chat for I, chat. Spartan Fly, we're so happy that War Flag has finally earned its visibility. So now it's time to make sure that I can get there too. Literally, I don't I don't think they understand why War Flag is the best starter. So for one, it's the best in pressure, no doubt. Right? Which is makes sense, right? It makes sense. It makes sense that Spartan Flag, or like the starter, is is good, is better than, than Sentinels, right? In terms of uh early game pressure right but there's a huge problem sentinels has a debuff where if you're not near anyone you don't get the extra gold spartan flag does not meaning not only is spartan flag better at early game pressure but you also get more gold than you would with sentinels that is a mistake there's just no way that you, this item is giving you better early game and more gold doesn't make any sense doesn't make any sense like, so, for example, you, you, you get an assist on an archer when nobody's there. Let's say, for example, your mid dies. You go to mid, you grab the, the lane, and you let the archer die by another archer killing it. You get 19 gold. And not only do you get 19 gold, you get also the passive of plus 8 gold because of Spartan Flag, right? Or War Flag. So, 
now let's compare that to Sentinels. Sentinels, you would just get the 19 gold. You would you would not get the extra eight gold. You talk when you're talking about six. You're multiplying that by six. That's crazy, is it not? So I think there is a problem there. I don't know. They have to. I w the way I would do it is I would buff Sentinels to be the same as War Flag in that aspect. I th I don't know why Sentinels has a debuff, but it does. Maybe I'll talk to them about that. You know what's crazy? I talked to a lot of the SPL supports and they didn't know that. Yo, what up, Freewill? They're they're just picking up War Flag because everybody else is picking up War Flag. <laughs> Like the amount of gold you're getting is insane. Like over over like fifteen or twenty minutes. That's the coach's fault. Coaches don't do anything in Smite other than draft. I feel it's like it inc increase every life steal and wait, let me finish this. Runeforge, Dawnbringer, okay, along our side nine, okay, move spire and fly, okay. Thirty five both prods, increase attack speed from ten to fifteen. Oh yeah, that's pretty nice. Increase physical power from thirty to forty. Dawnbringer, ooh. And increase health. Okay, some more of a damage item. Runeforge Glyph. Increase physical power from 30 to 40. Decrease health from 200 to 150. Increase cost by 50 gold. I think it's a buff. That's definitely a buff. Brossbound. Increase physical power from 25 to 35. Okay. Incre decrease health from 300 to 200. Okay. Decrease passive cooldown. Okay, the internal cooldown was a pr big problem for Frostbound. So I'm sure you're going to see more Frostbounds, I think. Gem of Iso. Increase health from 150 to 200 decrease the passive cooldown from 8 to 5 decrease the cost from 2550 as items to last shadow drinker clap as item as a meme increase stealth and movement speed duration from 3 to 5 seconds okay it might be back 3 to 5 oh well, might be back from never being there so i'm not sure what that means but 3 to 5, five seconds is pretty long mystical increase physical potential from 35 to 40 increase damage per level from 1 to 1.5 decrease cost might be back. Might be back. Might be. I, I feel like I want to play solo, dude. I, 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 solo is where it's at. Shoguns. Remove 10% cooldown. Added 10% attack speed. That's pretty cool. I think that's the way it should be. Transcend. I always thought this item was pretty weird to have cooldown. Uh, Transcendence. Remove 10% cooldown. Unevolved. Added 10% physical pen. Okay. I think that's really nice. I think that's the way it should be. Pythax, remove 10% cooldown, increase power by 5, reduce health, increase health, sorry, by 250. Okay, I think that's a giant buff because I'm pretty sure mages don't give a shit about cooldown. Potion of power, remove, oh, never mind, if they remove 10% CD from potion of power, never mind. Well, CD's getting hit pretty hard, I think that's good for the game, I think there's way too much CD in the game. You had totem, you had the tiki, you had the bread pot, you had this, you had that. Every item has CD. I think that's good. Marble burns. All right, so let's talk about the gods. Increased damage scaling per tick from 15 to 20 percent. Increased slow from 10 to 30 percent to 15 and 35. Small, small, small buffs. Tearing the veil. Decreased cooldown 60 to 55 on Cleo. Five seconds. Small, small buff. Healing on the passive, four to us, one to six, four to one five. Oh, the scaling is a bit better. Increase the mana heal from two to 15 percent, to three to ten. Okay, not bad, not bad. Hardio life tap, heavy charge, decrease cooldown 17 to five. That character is fucked 17 seconds, sheesh. Seismic crush, decrease cooldown from 18 to 14 to 16 to 14, so better early. Probably better for solo now. Kumba throwback, increased damage from 90 to 350 to 95 to 355. Increased flying minion damage from 90 to 370 to... Okay, small, small buffs. First, increased self heal from 35 to 95 to 40 to 120. Ooh, that's a nice buff. Cherry, raging tides, decreased da item damage reduction from 25 to 20%. This character's dead. Increased spinner damage from this character's trash. Neath, world weaver, increased damage from 230 to 490 plus 120 scaling to 125 scaling. Fire and extra power across the board. I guess. E set circular protection reduced damage to fully. I mean, you know how many ults I get hit by by being a streamer. It's just like every day. This is, this is a this is a nerf to me, chat. Circle protection reduced damage to fully charged from eight hundred to four thousand to seven hundred. What the hell is character's ass? Either way. Uh, I don't know about this. It's kind of weird. Summon beast shift to slow from eighty percent or one second to forty percent or two seconds. Yeah, way better. And consume increase. 
Execute threshold from 30 to 50%, 50% all ranks. Nice, big buff. Ground dive, decrease cooldown from 22 to 14 seconds, 20 to 40 seconds. Rising flight, decrease cooldown from 22 to 14 to 20 to 14. Okay, Merlin, that's a, that's a, lot, of, that's a lot of quality of life. Merlin, mastery, decrease cooldown from 32 to 20 to 30 to 20. Okay, early game helps. Convinc uh, conviction, decrease mana cost 60 to 45. Okay, Amana, sleeping giant. Increase attack speed conversion from 10 to 15%. Increase base duration from 4 to 5 seconds. Osiris, judgment tether. Increase attack speed debuff from 20% on ranks to 20 to 30. Over the scaling. Or the afterlife decrease from 75. What the hell? They're buffing this god after seeing. They literally, Deathwalker made meta. DW made meta all the way from SCC, all the way to the end of fucking. S the the finals, Odin, Path of Valhalla, decrease stacks from five to four, increase movement speed per stack from four to five percent, increase power. From why are they buff why are they buffing these characters? Bakken, Curse of the Ghost Will, decrease protection conversion from thirty to twenty five. Yeah, that had to happen, but maybe more. If you guys have any, uh, hope you guys uh, learned something.